Judgment in the Appeal, Hayward and Zurich Insurance Company, PLC. Lord Clark will hand down the judgment to the court. The respondent, Mr Hayward, suffered an injury at work in June 1998. Mr Hayward brought proceedings against his employer and the employer admitted liability. But Mr Hayward deliberately and dishonestly exaggerated the extent of the injury in order to achieve a higher settlement figure than he was entitled to. As a result, in October 2003, his claim was settled by the employer's liability insurer, Zurich, for £134,973. By the time of the settlement, the insurer had video evidence of Mr Hayward's exaggeration. But by February 2009, Zurich had gathered further evidence showing that Mr Hayward had recovered a full year before the settlement. It sought to set aside the settlement and claimed damages for deceit. Mr Hayward applied for summary judgment on the basis that the claim had already been compromised in, in the previous proceedings. His application for summary judgment, or strikeout, was successful before the county court, but overturned by the Court of Appeal. The insured's claim was therefore allowed to proceed. The trial of quantum came before his honour Judge Maloney, Queen's Counsel, who, in an excellent judgment, found that Mr Hayward had deliberately exaggerated the effects of his injury. As a result, the judge set aside the settlement agreement and awarded Mr Hayward a much reduced sum of some £14,720. A second Court of Appeal allowed Mr Hayward's appeal, holding that the insurer could not be allowed to set aside the settlement agreement since it was aware of Mr Hayward's fraud at that time. Zurich appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court unanimously allows Zurich's appeal and restores the judge's conclusion that the settlement agreement should be set aside on the basis that Mr Hayward be paid the reduced sum. I have given the lead judgment, Lord Toulson has given a concurring judgment, and the other justices agree with both. The reasons may be shortly stated. The critical question in this appeal was whether, in order to show the requisite influence by or reliance on the, represent, on the misrepresentation in a claim to set aside a compromise on the basis of fraudulent misrepresentation, the defrauded representee, that is Zurich in this case, must prove that it settled because it believed that the misrepresentations were true. The answer to the question is no. There is no authority supporting a freestanding requirement of belief that the misrepresentations are true. The representee's state of mind is instead relevant to, but not necessarily decisive of, the court's consideration of inducement into the settlement agreement and causation. There may be factual circumstances in which a representee knows that a representation is false, but nevertheless relies on it. But this is not such a case. The insurer in this case did not know that Mr. Delib Mr. Hayward was deliberately exaggerating his injuries to such an extent as later became clear and did everything that it could to investigate. Qualified belief in a misrepresentation does not rule out the conclusion that the insurer was induced by it. Lord Toulson has added that the issue in this case is whether a suspicious insurer who nevertheless settles the claim on the basis that it is likely to exceed, su su succeed, but then later discovers a fraud, can set aside that settlement and recover damages for deceit. It must be shown that the false representation caused the insurer to act to its detriment. But such inducement is always a question of fact going to the issue of causation. On the facts, Mr. Hayward's misrepresentation induced the insurers to enter into the settlement agreement in this case. Zurich's appeal therefore succeeds.